What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Just want to uh, come to you real quick. Um, I know uh, it's a lot of basketball and stuff going on and all that good stuff, but uh, and it's MLK Day. But I uh, just want to come to you on my usual um, Monday evenings and just talk to you about a few things. Um, just want to also say these are just my opinions on everything, how I feel. Um, not necessarily the truth because everything is opinionated and is debatable, you know, so and everything is subjective. So we're going to start out. We're going to talk about <clears throat> first. We're going to talk about the. The NFC Championship game, the Bucks and the Packers. Um, this weekend, we had some some pretty decent games and some things that, you know, um, I didn't foresee. Like, I, I didn't foresee um, the Bucks going to New Orleans and, and beat New Orleans and seeing Drew Brees play the way that he played. But, you know, you have to give credit to the Bucks, their defense, Tom Brady, you know, Everything they did, they went down there with a game plan. They executed. They won. Uh, the Packers, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers, he did his thing. You know, they 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 took care of business. You know, like they were supposed to be in the number one seed. So now the road to the to the Super Bowl goes through Green Bay, and I think that's going to be an epic match matchup because you have a great defense versus a great offense. Um, Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady and uh, Lambeau Fields to get to the Super Bowl. And at the end of the day, I think it will be a close game. I think it, both quarterbacks will play particularly well. The only issue is, is, you know, if it's snowing in Green Bay, you know, Tom Brady's kind of used to that because he played in, in uh, New England. So they had a lot of games where, they would play in the snow or play in bad weather. But these warm weather teams, sometimes they tend to struggle in those types of situations. You know, and a lot of those guys on, on Tampa Bay, this is not something they're used to. But with Tom Brady being their leader, Tom Brady, you know, bringing his experience and all of that good stuff to, 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 to this team, I feel like, you know, this game will be a really, really good game. Um, I also think, at the end of the day, I, 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 I'm Green Bay is a a good team, but I really just don't trust them like that. You know, Tom Brady has a lot of weapons. He's experienced. You know, he's won Super Bowls. I mean, yes, Aaron Rodgers has won a Super Bowl. Everybody call him this bad man, but the only way they win, he come out and he be two times that bad man that he is because it's going to be a lot of pressure on him simply because it's played in Lambeau. He has the number one team in the NFC and Tom Brady left the AFC, came to the NFC. And if you want to make a name for yourself now, Drew Brees stuck up the place. He didn't do it. Aaron Rodgers has to go out there and play top notch football. The defense has to get to Tom Brady. If they don't get to Tom Brady, he'll pick them apart because, I mean, they run a lot of sets where he gets the ball out within two seconds. Tom Brady is not holding on to the football that long. But if that front four, front three, front four, they get to, to Tom Brady, we could have, you know, an a epic game where Green Bay takes that, that next trip to the, to the Super Bowl. And this is the first time – that Aaron Rodgers has had uh, a NFC championship game at home. I mean, that's kind of odd with him being, you know, in the NFL so long, you know, ha having won a Super Bowl and then, you know, played in other championship games. I, you know, but, you know, this game right here, um, I'm, I'm kind of torn right now because I, I don't know who to go with. I, later on during the week, I, I'll think about it some more. But as of right now, I'm picking the Bucs. And, and I hate to say that because I'm not a Bucks fan. I Actually, I'm not a Green Bay fan. But I, I think that I'm going to go with the Bucs right now. But we shall see. We shall see. We shall see what happens. Tom Brady goes out there and they don't get any pressure on him. I think Green Bay's in trouble. 
I, I just truly think they're in trouble and they can cancel Christmas on everything. But if they get to Brady and, you know, Rodgers has a hell of a game, you know, three, four touchdowns and, you know, they just don't get to Rodgers and he, you know, he, he stays upright the entire game and, you know, the receivers get open, then I, I, I think that the Bucs will – have a long trip back to to Tampa Bay, but right now I'm going to go at the Bucks, and that could change later on during the week. But we shall see. It's a lot of things that could happen from now until game time because you know you do have you know the COVID issues. Anybody going to come back with COVID? You know you do have some injuries. You know all that good stuff. So we will see what happens. But right now I'm I'm, I'm leaning towards the Bucks. And we're going to stay in football. And the next one we're going to do, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the AFC championship game. AFC championship game is kind of picky, kind of tricky right now because we really don't know if Patrick Mahomes is playing right now. Patrick Mahomes left the game against the Browns uh, in the third quarter with a concussion. I mean, he has to meet concussion protocol. He has to pass all of that. And I'm not sure if, 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 he will because it's a short period of time. I feel like if it was, you know, two weeks from now, then, you know, it'll be real clear. Hopefully he cleared the cobwebs and he's able to make it to, to the AFC championship game. Because me personally, I feel like if the bills want to win, I feel like they should, you know, want to beat Patrick Mahomes whenever he's at his best and he's there and not some backup, but don't get me wrong. Andy Reid is by far, in my opinion, the best coach in the NFL right now. I've I felt this for a very long time because he was a coach for the Eagles, and I, I was mad whenever we got rid of him. I never wanted to get rid of him because I just felt like he was a hell of a coach. And I think Andy Reid being Andy Reid, he'll find a way even if Patrick Mahomes does not play. He will get this backup guy, you know, ready to play, get the team ready to play. He'll come up with something to make sure that they are ready to win this football game to give Patrick Mahomes another week or two to recover and then come back and be ready for the Super Bowl. On the other hand, you have the Buffalo Bills. And the Buffalo Bills, they legit. They are a legit football team that could – could beat anybody on any given week. And, you know, you got Stefan Diggs who's playing out his mind. You know, that defense looks good. And, you know, they made Lamar Jackson and, and, and Baltimore just look average over this weekend. They made them look like, you know, some JV team or whatever. They, they couldn't run the ball. They couldn't pass the ball. They couldn't do anything. So with this Bills and Chiefs game, uh, I'm going to go with the Chiefs because I like Andy Reid and I like the Chiefs has a whole lot of weapons, but it's kind of iffy if Patrick Mahomes don't play because, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is, is, is their quarterback. He's their best guy. He's their almost billion-dollar man. So, you know, if he doesn't play, that changes the outlook on that football game. And it also makes things a little bit more interesting because everybody has picked the Chiefs just to say, oh, they're going to win the Super Bowl. And, you know, because it's it's the Chiefs and everybody else. But, you know, the Cleveland Browns showed a little recipe on how to beat them. You know, you know, run the football, you know, take care of the football, keep them off the field, keep it a, you know, a relatively close game. And you you can beat the Chiefs. Now, the Browns shot themselves in the foot with, you know, turnovers, a fumble that end up in a in a touchback. So they kind of shot themselves. And then, you know, Patrick Mahomes going out. And the Reed was able to, you know, to get his back up in and, and, and keep things going. That fourth and one was, was really big, was really, really big. And so with this game, I think I'm going to go with the Chiefs right now. But if Patrick Mahomes doesn't play – the Bills got a big time shot to go to Arrowhead and and, and upset the Chiefs and, and head to the Super Bowl. So we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see how my, uh, Mahomes progress over the week. You know they're kind of keep a hush hush, but you know Andy Reid saying that he's good right now. You know he's better. You know 
which that's what he's supposed to say because really truth and honestly, if he's not ready to play, I would, if I'm a coach, I would prolong it as much as possible so they are game plan for Patrick Mahomes and not game plan for whoever I have starting that. And, and, and that makes a big difference in football games because if you don't game plan for that guy, you, 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 you kind of stuck. So we'll see what happens with, with Patrick Mahomes over the next few days and see if he, you know, able to, you know, get out of concussion protocol. And, you know, hopefully he does because, you know, if I'm playing, if I was playing, I would want to beat Patrick Mahomes and not his backup. So, but we'll see what happens. And, you know, right now I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with the chiefs uh, to, to win the AFC simply because of Andy Reid. I, I mean, I think Andy Reid just, I mean, he's just a phenomenal coach. I, I could talk about Andy Reid for days and days and days and days and days, you know, because the guy's just, uh, you know, if, if, if you don't list him as the best coach, you got to list him as one of the best. His name has to be in the, top, the topic of conversation. He He's led – he's had three straight AFC championship games held at home. It was by Andy Reid. And then he also the only coach that had three NFC championship games at home, and that, that was when he was with Philadelphia. So, you know – that got to say for a lot. Now, unfortunately, he didn't. He don't have all the rings and stuff that you know a Belichick or anybody else. But you got to mention that game, that man name up there at the top with with some of the best coaches in the NFL of all times because he he has done it for a long time and it's proven. You know that he's a winner and you know he he has a Super Bowl up under his belt. He got wins on his resume. I mean, and, you know, players like playing for Andy Reid. They just love playing for the guy. So right now I'm going to stick with the Chiefs and hopefully Mahomes get back so we can see the great game between the Bills and the Chiefs. All right, next topic we're going to go to. We're going to talk about the beard going to Brooklyn. You know, James Harden going to the Brooklyn Nets. That was a big trade last week and you know the nets gave up a whole lot to get james they gave up some players they gave up some draft picks you know ended up having to give up a little bit of money also because um you know one of the players didn't um didn't meet uh the physical or whatever they found something you know hopefully he gets better um you know as as time goes on with with his help but a lot of people has been giving james harden a, a hard time about you know, how he handled stuff in Houston and, you know, him quitting on the team and not showing up and, you know, all of that good stuff. But, you know, I'm not justifying James throwing some of his teammates up on the bus whenever he said that we just weren't good enough and, you know, with the talent and all that good stuff. I mean, let's just keep it real. If you look at that Houston team when he was there, I mean, they were basically going through a rebuild. I mean, you picked up a John Wall who's been injured, hadn't played in two years now. You know, granted, he looks good. Like, John looks good. Then you pick up a DeMarcus Cousins, which I never really liked in the first place. I felt like he was just an overrated guy, you know, that played in a a league that doesn't have big men. So a lot of people would always say, oh, he's the best big man in the league. Well, it's easy to say that whenever you ain't got the five big men, you know. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, it's easy to say that. So, and then you had a lot of other guys, you know, you had PJ Tucker and, and stuff like that. But I mean, was that going to win a championship with James at the helm? No, the guy said it from the start that he wanted to be out of Houston. Yeah. You know, Houston tried to make it, oh, well, we got James signed for two years. And, you know, it kind of goes back and forth whenever. You know, people say, well, players shouldn't, you know, force their way out. But if the owner wanted them out, the owner would trade them, and that's the end of it. He can do it anytime he get good and ready. So I'm all for players being able to, you know, create their own destiny, get wherever they want to get to. And the guy made it clear he wasn't happy there. So if he wasn't happy, you already knew. And James did what he had to do to get out of get out of Houston, which meant was I'm going to be a butthole. I'm going to, you know, cry about everything. I'm going to show up, but I'm not going to give 100 percent simply because I don't want to be here. You know, 
And so I asked you straight up, could you trade me? Whatever, whatever, whatever. They didn't want to do it. Ended up having to trade him because of what he said, which that was the last straw for Houston. But I think it was kind of premeditated by James because that was a very smart, calculated move to get out. Let me go in here and discuss stuff that we talk about in-house, out the house. Get him out. And now a lot of people are giving James a hard time. Ah, oh, you know, he, he wrong for that. I know James. James is a good guy. James is a very nice guy. You know, he, he loves playing the game of basketball. He loves people. You know, if you and him are teammates, friends, he going to be down for you. All around good guy. He got, he got out of Houston. Houston, he had been there. Yes, he gave a lot to the city of Houston. And a lot of people give him a hard time. Well, he couldn't play with Russ. He couldn't play with Chris Paul. Now he want to go back and play with KD. And people don't realize this. James played some of his best basketball in Oklahoma City with KD. Yeah, he was the sixth man. But if you go back and look at those years, James Harden was on the court with Russ and KD come crunch time. In the third, fourth quarter, crush time, James was on the court with those guys. A lot of times he was handling the basketball. Everybody said, is it going to be enough basketballs in in Brooklyn for him, Katie, and Kyrie? I, I think it will be because they have to understand if we play together, it's enough shots for everybody. And then you play with the best person in the world to not – have the, you you know, KD doesn't have to have the ball in his hand all the time. KD can give you 30 off 12 shots. If they get up and down the floor and run the way James really want to play, most of his points come from the foul line. James was shooting 12 to 15 free throws a game. So now he's over in Brooklyn. He's in Brooklyn. He's playing with KD. We don't know where Kyrie is. And I think that's going to be the X factor. Like you saw James have a triple double in his in in his uh, uh, Brooklyn debut. KD with forty. The guys like playing with each other. You know they they like playing with each other. So why wouldn't something like that work? It, it can work. It scares a lot of other teams because if they get together and they get a lot of continuity and cohesiveness, all three of them together. You know, with, you know, DeAndre Jordan, you know, anchoring their defense, you know, Jeff Green pitching in where he where he has to, you know, that's, you know, they got a bunch of pieces that could scare a lot of teams. And with James going there, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I actually like it. I said it from the start that that was probably the best place for him to go because, he had KD. KD don't want championships. KD can, you know, can, can can be in James' ear and it not be an issue. He went somewhere like Philadelphia where he would have came in and just been the straight up guy. That would have been hell. But now he, he he's with KD, a, a, a leader that can, you know, can tell James, like, give me the ball. It's not going to be all that dribbling, 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 all that good stuff. If you can see, he, he, James is passing the basketball. Now, when Kyrie comes back, I, like I said, that's going to be the X factor. But with James Harden being there, I, I just feel like if defensively, you know, they and they stay healthy and they get to the playing together more, they're going to be trouble. I'm not picking them to say they just going to come out the East, but they, they got a great, great possibility and a, a great chance of doing that if they start playing well together, simply because, you know, with them, you know, those guys are different. That team would be different than the Milwaukee team because Milwaukee is onto the Kupo and then, you know, a couple other guys that, you know, you never know going to show up and all that good stuff. And then they don't play the right type of basketball come playoff time in Milwaukee, in my personal opinion. Now, then you have Philadelphia that, you know, Philly, you know, they got some good pieces. They got Doc Rivers as their coach, but 
I'm not a fan of Doc. You know, I think Doc, you know, won his championship in in in, in Boston when him and Thibodeau was together and they broke up. Tibbs went somewhere else and got a job, and ain't neither one of them been able to get completely right since they left each other. I think the only way Doc gets back right is if he gets the Tibbs back, Tibbs get Doc back. But in Brooklyn, you got KD, who I feel like he's coming off that injury, and everybody was wondering, was he going to be the old KD or was – you know, something going to be wrong, but he's showing that KD is still KD. And then you got James, who won an MVP, you know, led the league and scoring the last three years, you know. And then you got Kyrie Irving, who's one of the most gifted guys that that's come through the NBA, can hound the ball, can shoot three, finish at the rim. With those three, that three-headed monster, I think it'll just be trouble for anybody to beat them. And then, like I said, with DeAndre Jordan, like people – Fail to realize this guy don't care if he touches the basketball. He anchors the defense. He does all the little nasty stuff down low that nobody else wants to do. And then Jeff Green, old journeyman, like Jeff Green can guard any position. And he can shoot the ball. He's athletic. You know, I just feel like this Brooklyn team, Adam James, makes them more of a threat to anybody they play against. I haven't picked them because it's a lot of basketball left. And you never know what's going to happen. And you just can't say, oh, they the barn favorite, the, uh, the bona fide favorites to come out of the East. No, that's not the case right now. Right now, they got to get themselves together. Then Kyrie is still, you know, on a hiatus. He has to go through protocol to get back in and all that good stuff. So we're going to see what's going to happen with that team. But Jay's going to Brooklyn. I love it. I love it. I, you know, I, I love it for him. I love it for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, Houston, it worked out for them, too. They they were able to get the draft picks and everything that they wanted. So at the end of the day, we're going to see what's going to happen. But I just feel like this James Harden deal, it, it makes the East that much stronger and it makes Brooklyn that much better. You know, I, I'm kind of leaning towards them coming out of the East. But like I said, there's a lot of basketball to be played, you know, and then you got other teams that, you know, are really good like the Philadelphia's and, and the Milwaukee Bucks. But we're going to see what's going to happen with James and the Brooklyn Nets and him playing with KD. As long as it's not a lot of dribbling, they play together and they defend, they are going to be trouble. And just mark my words, if that happens, then I will and, – and they stay healthy. Then I will say they will come out of the East and a possibility – a win the championship because I just think KD is just a cold-blooded sniper. Yes, he went to Golden State and won him a couple of championships or whatever, playing with Clay and Steph. But this guy, I felt since the first time I saw him in the league that he's a walking bucket and that he can lead a team and people will follow his lead and he can lead this team. Don't get it wrong. James going there doesn't make Brooklyn his team. Everybody knows this. This is Kevin Durant's team. Kevin Durant will lead this team wherever they need to go. If James and Kyrie follows, then I do believe they can win. They can win, and it don't matter who they play against. I don't care if they play against the Lakers, the Clippers, whoever. They can win against anybody. And my last topic today is, you know, because I know today is uh, one of those days where we honor the, the life and legacy of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, today is his day, but, you know, actually me and him share a birthday together. His birthday was actually Friday. He would have been, if I'm not mistaken, 92 years old. And the guy still, you know, is affecting life today at the age, at, at, at you know, his at, at past his death. You know, it was unfortunate what happened to him years ago, you know, assassination, you know, because he was a hated man. He was a hated man because he wanted he wanted equal rights for people like me, people of my color, you know, black people, you know, because, you know, we came in and we had been through so much. And this guy fought for a lot of us. And still to this day, a lot of stuff that he fought for, we are reaping the benefits of it. Do we have uh, a long ways to go? Yes, we do. But, you know, for me, I just appreciate Dr. King and what he did for, 
you know, me as a black man and me never even knowing him or, you know, not even being around whenever he was going through, you know, all of this civil rights movement and, you know, doing all of this stuff that he was doing to make sure now that, you know, I'm able to have, you know, certain things that he didn't have or others did have, you know, from the 60s and the 70s. And, you know, what people, yeah, we celebrate this day, but I think Dr. King should be celebrated every day because that to me is what uh, America is about. Like, you know, about the land of opportunity and he took his opportunities and, and tried to give back. That's, that's, that's what he did. He, he, he gave his life to us to, to make sure that we had, you know, all these civil rights and all the freedoms that, you know, every other person had. And, you know, you can go on and you could talk about this guy for, you know, you know, hours and hours and all the time. But if, if you listen to some of his quotes and some of the things that he says, I mean, it, it, it resonates to you today. And I think a lot of us should be more like Dr. King and, you know, be better men, be better people. You know, it should be a work in progress for everybody on an everyday basis. Yeah, he made some mistakes, you know, some good and some, you know, he had some good days. He had some bad days. He had, he had, you know, it, it, we know it's some stuff that's documented that he made some real bad decisions and we all have, we all fall short, but it's a matter of how, we pick ourselves up and we, you know, carry ourselves through, you know, the adversities and stuff. And a lot of times it's, it's adversity for ourselves that, that we put ourselves through. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we should try to make ourselves better men, better people, better human beings, period. And, you know, I'm just going to leave on this last quote from Dr. King. I looked up a few of them and I, you know, I, I, I've done a lot of research on Dr. King before because I, you know, I had to learn the I have a dream speech. I did that in kindergarten and, you know, had to do that. So, you know, a lot of stuff I've been knowing about him for a very long time. But um, this is one thing that I, you know, I it says the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moment of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at the time of challenge and controversy. And that should be us on an everyday basis, like where we stand on challenges and controversy, because life is not always perfect. Life is not always good. So it's how we are during that time. So I encourage everybody to be better people, better human beings hey, and make tomorrow be better than what it was today. Everybody have a good night. Enjoy the rest of the MLK Day and all the basketball games. Have a good evening.